Welcome to another Chinese food adventure. I am in the beautiful city of Fuzhou in Fujian province and I come here with a mission which is of course to eat food. But in preparation for this food adventure, I actually asked my subscribers on Billy Billy to suggest to me some of the must try items in this city. Well, I was not at all prepared for the result. I got literally hundreds of comments telling me I need to try something called Fu Tiao Qiang. Its literal translation is Buddha jumping over the wall and from a quick online search I can see it's some kind of soup. I thought the best way to learn more about this dish is to hit the streets of Fuzhou and ask local Fuzhouers what they think of their local dish. I have my microphone. Let's go. Fu Tiao Qiang is what? It's a very special dish in Fuzhou. There are many different foods mixed together. Like the fish, 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 the fish. 做成了一碗类似汤的一样的一道菜，汤底很浓，很好吃。你觉得在哪里吃这个佛跳墙比较好？聚春园嘛，聚春园，聚春园就就在那儿。这个比较老牌，聚春园的比较老牌。哦，这就,就是这个吗？So I have to say this has been a very worthwhile interview. I've learned a lot of things. I've learned that the place that everyone is actually recommending I go and eat at is literally just here where I've been interviewing them. So that's great for me. But this is by no means the only place you can get Fu Tao Chiang in this city. So many shops, there are signs in the windows, but apparently not all of these places are very um, traditional. It seems like this is going to be the most traditional place to get it. So hopefully we won't have to line up for too long. It seems to be a famous place, so who really knows? So I guess I didn't have to be too worried about uh, not getting a table. It is a pretty empty here. Here's another thing I just learned about Fu Tao Chiang. It's very, very expensive. 8,888 renminbi. But I've just seen that it's for 10 people. Still, that's a lot. That's expensive. How much for one person? 498? So that's like a hundred Australian dollars. So I set about ordering that as well as one of my other favorite Fuzhou dishes, Li Zhi Rou, lychee pork. If this is my Fu Tiao Chiang, I'm going to laugh. That is so small. Is this one? Yes, this is Fu Tiao Chiang. Oh, thank you. I'm in a bit of shock. This is definitely the most expensive thing I've ordered per its size. Just for a little size comparison here, it's roughly the size of my fist. This is 500 RMB and I could probably finish this in one gulp. But when you go through inside, there is a lot in here. There's like at least one abalone, if not two. There's a sea cucumber, an entire sea cucumber. Actually something that I've never tried before. And if you're wondering why it's called Buddha jumping over the wall, I actually got some answers outside about that too. Because this food is literally so good that even a monk who doesn't eat uh, meat and seafood would jump over a wall to eat it. So I'm excited to see if it really is that good. Here we go. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to try it. I'm first going, just going to try some of that soup. It smells actually really, really good. And you bet I'm going to savor it because if my calculations are correct, it's going to be roughly 50 renminbi per spoonful. Ooh. Very salty, very umami, like the umami just hits you in the face, which is obvious because there's so much seafood in this. Now let's get into the goodies. So um, the thing I am most excited to try, wow, look at it. It's like the whole thing. I'm excited to try this. A few minutes later. Oh my goodness. This has been a weird series of events. So uh, as you may have just seen, I actually just dropped my uh, sea cucumber on the floor. Uh, not my finest moment. I did have a mini breakdown about it, not gonna lie. I was so excited to eat it and then obviously I couldn't eat it once it's on the floor. Um, but then what followed was even crazier. So um, someone came up to me and I thought they had seen me drop my sea cucumber on the floor. I was like mortified. But then they were like, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like the angels are singing, the angels are looking out for me, so I'm gonna get a second chance at Fortiao Tiang. 
This is the weirdest. While they prepared my second $100 pot of soup, my lychee pork arrived. And would you check out that glorious orange color? This is a dish that I know I'm just gonna love because I'm a foreigner. And like most foreigners, I really like that sweet and sour flavor profile. I think it makes me nostalgic for the Chinese food I grew up with in Australia. Um, it's just a kind of just like comfort food. So it's, it's packed with lychees. I think this is a lychee, let me try. Oh, it's not, it's water chestnut, which I'm actually happier about because all those lychees would have made this ultra, ultra sweet. But with that water chestnut, it's a really nice texture. Listen how crunchy. Now let's actually try some of that pork. Mm, it's really good. But this actually takes it to another level because that pork actually has kind of a bacony taste to it. So it's also a little bit smoky, not only sweet and sour, but it's also smoky. Oh, it's so good. I'm gonna need to order some rice to go with this. Okay, now I can truly enjoy this dish, like I did in my childhood. And here we go. My second bowl of Fortiao Chang has arrived. Let's pay this moment the respect it deserves. It's so like jelly-like. It has like an umami taste, but I don't know if it's from that or from the soup and it soaked up the juices. It's mostly just the texture, I'd say. Going in with an abalone. Mm. Nice consistency, not too chewy. Lovely looking mushroom. Mm. Here's another thing I've never eaten before. Pig foot tendon. It didn't have much of a taste. It was more of a texture. A very, very chewy texture, might I add. So at this stage, I am pretty sure I have eaten at least a little bit of everything in this soup. And um, my thoughts are, this is kind of like your upgraded mum's chicken noodle soup. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you're feeling sick, you've got a cold, you're in bed and you want something warm and nutritious to like boost you up. This is the exact thing you'd want to have because I'm sure that this is just so good for your body with all of those ingredients in there. Um, obviously not good for people with gout. This would probably be a person with gout's worst nightmare. But um, for me, it's uh, definitely very appealing if I was to be sick. Um, but even more appealing if I was sick and I had a lot of money. Until that day comes, I'm gonna finish every little drop of this soup here. That is definitely not a dinner I'll be forgetting anytime soon. Memorable for more ways than one, I would have to say. Holy moly, I cannot believe I dropped my freaking sea cucumber on the ground. Oh, but I have to say, I don't feel like in my heart and in my soul that this food adventure is over yet because I'm only here in full draw for one day and there are still so many things that I want to eat. So I'm thinking we should go find us some fish balls. So one thing is certain, here in Fuzhou, you don't have to walk very far before you come across a shop that sells fish balls. It was only when I entered I realized this isn't just any fishball store. This place has been in business making fishballs for almost a hundred years. This here is a photo of the original store. Even though I am so full from the meal we've just had, I've even got takeaway here. I have to have fishballs because I cannot come to Fuzhou and not order fishballs. It's like, it's like if I went to Paris and didn't have a croissant. So I've been to Fuzhou once before and I have had fishballs. Oh! There's something on the inside. What is it on the inside? Pork. Pork. Okay, so it should be more like a fish pork ball. Yeah, um, yeah I could eat five more of those. So I thought here I could mix it up a little bit. I've actually gone for the eel ball, um, which she says is also a bestseller. It comes with five balls per serve and a total price of 12 renminbi. I find it kind of funny that this is just like so much cheaper than the other soup we just had. These balls are quite big, you know? Look at that. She said it was gonna be fishier than the normal fish bowl. But I actually really like it. It doesn't have like a fishy consistency. It still holds its shape so well. It reminds me more of a, like a really thick dumpling than it does like something made of fish on the outside. You can kind of see there. And the meat inside is just so tender and salty and flavorful. The outside is really umami. Man, Fujo people really like umami. I've learned that today. I'm really good. When I'd almost finished my fish balls, the waitress told me not to forget about the soup. She told me to add this special pepper as well as some vinegar to intensify the taste. Apparently this is how the locals eat it. So let's mix that up. 
and now try the soup. Wow, it's so this is so I tried a spoonful of the soup before, before I added the, the pepper, and I found it was like, okay, it's okay, it was nothing crazy. But after I've added the pepper and the, the vinegar, it's like a completely different dish. Yep, that did it. I am officially full, and that brings us to the end of our Fuzhou food adventure. And what an adventure it has been. Um, sometimes it's just interesting how things work out, you know. The angels have their plan. I wish I had another day here in Fuzhou to explore more foods and have more snacks, but unfortunately I do have to head off tomorrow. Um, but thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment if you feel so inclined. Yijian san lian. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.